Hello, thank you for watching uh, my video, which is an introduction video to why and how of small groups. Why should we have a small group? Well, that's a good question, and, and it's a question that, that has many answers. I'd like to address uh, maybe the bigger picture and then also talk about how we in our church need to have small group ministries. Jesus said, come, follow me. You know, we all rejoice and, and we thank God for saving us and inviting us to follow him. That's the reason why we do church things. And, and it's a good reason. But that wasn't the only thing Jesus said. He also said, go and make disciples. Now, uh, in our lives today and in our culture, one of the very best ways to obey this great commission is to have small groups. There's many kinds of small groups. And uh, we, you know, we want to um, be intelligent when we, when we do something. We're going to spend our energy. Uh, we might as well try to do our best to, uh, uh, to do it right, uh, to be the most effective that we can be. So I'm going to give you some ideas what kind of small groups and uh, what our purpose is. Each one of these seven that I have uh, can have a good purpose. We don't have to do all seven, but um, in fact, we may have some other idea. But the idea is to think ahead, use our mind, and plan to be successful in our small group ministry. In Proverbs 29, 18, without a vision, the people perish. This is so very true. A vision, a plan, something to keep our targeting on and a goal. A vision is, is another way of saying a goal. Our vision is to be as effective as we can as a church. Our vision is to help some lost people find Christ and be saved. Our vision is to help those who have come to Christ and become disciples to grow stronger in their faith and eventually they themselves will go and make disciples. If God himself needs a plan, don't you think we need a plan? Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you. We also know that God planned to send Jesus to save us ever since the Garden of Eden at the very least. In fact, one place says that he was slain since the foundation of the earth. God has plans, and I think we should plan and have a goal and have a vision for our small group ministry. And each small group should have a vision. You know, if you, if you have a group and it's trying to do something, but they don't really have a vision, they don't have a direction to go, they just drift around like a, like a sailboat with, with no captain, nobody turning the rudder, and it just blows around in the wind. Now, uh, one thing, two things I would like to suggest before we look at the seven types. One is... I really think we should have what, it, what I call closed-ended groups. Now, there's a couple of ways that a group can be closed. One of, the, one of the ways a group is closed is, if I only have 10 seats in my house, then I can only have 10 people. In fact, you can get into trouble with zoning laws having too many people in your house. The fire marshal would say that's not safe. Besides that, you want everyone to be comfortable. You want everyone to be able to see each other's face and, and be able to hear and, and be able to discuss. And so having a certain number of people in your small group just makes perfect sense. The other thing that, that we have to think about, too, is sometimes a group needs to be closed because of what kind of group that it is. Obviously, if you were having a group of, uh, uh, well, it's one of our types, and we'll get to it in a minute. Uh, if you were having a group that's designed for uh, health, weight loss, um, be far better for you to have women in the group separate and men in the group separate to discuss these a little bit more personal things. So there's reasons that you close the group. Also, uh, you may have a group that's only for older. You may have a group that's only for young people. 
There's many, many reasons why we would have rules of who can be the member in our group. Some groups, many groups, we want them to be open to everyone until the seats are filled. But uh, it's, a, it's a good idea to have some idea of um, uh, whether where to draw the line for our group. So closed groups, open groups is one of the things you have to plan for and discuss. Sometimes it's better to have only men only or women's only groups for certain kinds of groups or even if you have a couple's group every once in a while let the men go to the coffee shop and let the women have a meeting and then break it up. Let the women go shopping and the men have a meeting. So uh, there's some thoughts. Uh, really I'm trying to get you to think about having a good plan for your small group. Types of small groups. The very first and I think the most common and what people think of it is a Bible study. Having a Bible study in your home has been around since I've been around and many, many churches have grown because they had Bible study away from the church in someone's home. Uh, sometimes uh, the Bible study type group is a fellowship group in which uh, you, uh, you really uh, you don't study very deeply into the Bible. You study, you read a verse, you talk about what it means or a chapter. But really, the group is for fellowship, and that's a wonderful thing. There's not a thing wrong with having fellowship groups. Uh, I would suggest always taking prayers and praying for people's special needs, even in a fellowship group, but just maybe not so intense and heavy. Now, if you're seriously uh, thinking of Bible study in your group, there are many, many good available resources. I strongly suggest that you consult the leader of your church, your pastor, or your Sunday school director, uh, your small group meeting director because the church itself may have some rules or guidelines concerning the materials that is approved for use in small groups and then you can say well this is a small group meeting from this church um, just uh, something to be aware of some churches kind of have a rule if you want to call it a, a small group from that church and they say well you need to study this kind of material or these materials um, I love to do a deal where the preacher from the, the church does a condensed version of the sermon series and has discussion questions and you just use the 15 minute video and then you discuss those the meaning of the, and the answers to the discussion questions it can be a very powerful and, and effective and, and a good uh, way of doing it. Another type is a prayer uh, study. A prayer study um, uh, designed to invite non-Christian or non-church people to learn about how God answers prayer. This is a really great way of reaching new people for the Lord and reaching new people with the gospel, bringing new people into the church. So uh, prayer groups are really, really good and a good way to reach out and help people grow in their faith, in their prayer faith, and also maybe even bring in someone as not ever prayed before, but they have some need, and, and they say, oh, Lord, I wish you'd pray for my family member, or for my cancer diagnosis, or whatever. It's a great way to help new people become aware of the fact that God hears and answers prayer. Now, another type has been very effective, and there's a great need for it. It's called grief care, and actually, there's an entire organization that will provide materials for grief care. They have websites, they have a great structure. Uh, grief care is one of those things that we're really considering for our church. Another one is divorce care. Uh, folks get divorced and suddenly they find themselves kind of lost, kind of lonely, and uh, uh, kind of wondering what to do. A uh, divorce care group can really help provide support, encouragement. And divorce care is one of those areas where you probably want to have men only divorce care, women only divorce care. Addiction recovery. There's so many great ways to have addiction recovery small groups. These might grow a bit larger. You may have them in the fellowship hall of the church or even in the sanctuary. And uh, you need special training for these and special leaders. And so uh, if you're interested in being involved in an addiction recovery group, talk to your pastor or your uh, Sunday school director, small group director, to talk about how you can be involved in an addiction recovery group. The uh, uh, health weight loss uh, group, uh, great. In fact, the YouVersion Bible has some devotionals that are really, really good to uh, show you what the Bible says about health and, and how you're eating and everything. And uh, this is another area where probably better to have men only, women only in uh, uh, health and weight loss 
and, and those kinds of things. The three groups that uh, Uversion has, the devotionals are Healthy by Design, Seven Cycles, a Biblical Guide to Weight Loss and Food, and Food is Not the Enemy. Uh, that's an interesting title. And they're found in the Uversion Bible. You can get that app on your phone or your tablet. And finally, uh, Deepening Discipling or Lay Minister Preparation. Now this is not only serious theology and Bible study and doctrinal study, it's also disciple training and discipler training. This is a good class for someone who might want to be a small group leader to learn about discipling, to learn about leading someone else, to grow in their faith, to be a stronger Christian and a leader of God's people. Well, you can see that there are so many different ways you can go with small group, but I want us to have a good plan in our small group ministry, and I hope you think about and have a good plan in your small group ministry. And of course, we're available to help anytime. Just get in touch with us. May the Lord bless you.